The Hunting Ground tells the story of dozens of young women who say they were raped by another student. The first few weeks, I made some of my best friends, but two of us were sexually assaulted before classes had even started. Some say the experience of reporting the assault was as bad or even worse than the assault itself. Don't talk to anyone about this. They protect perpetrators because they have a financial incentive to do so. Universities are protecting a brand. The documentary looks at not just the booze-filled rituals, but also the power and money behind some famous fraternities. SAE, sexual assault expected. As well as the power of star athletes, a few who were expelled for assault only after the football season ended. The producers spoke to former profs and administrators and to this man who went to jail for sexual assault and warns of repeat offenders. I, I know I was at fault. College is a place where lots of alcohol is consumed and the uh, number of victims is endless. But mostly, the documentary is the story of two young women who brought a legal case forward against their university and are traveling the country, encouraging others to take action. My name is Carolyn Luby. My name is Alexa Schwartz. My name is Ari Mostov. I caught up with director Kirby Dick really earlier this week. So how big a problem is sexual assault on campus? Between 16 and 20 percent of undergraduate women are sexually assaulted while in college. So anything from inappropriate touching to rape? Most of that is rape and serious sexual assault. So the numbers haven't changed in 30 years. We've been talking about it for yeah. at least 30 years. Yeah. Why is it still happening? I, I think the, the primary reason is the schools are so concerned about their reputation. The, your reputation means everything to a school. It draws you know, top quality applicants and obviously it brings in um, an incredible amount of donations in the U.S. You know, donations really are so important to higher education. So even though, of course, no administrator wants anything like this to happen on their campus, making the choice to uh, protect the rec reputation over protecting the health and safety of their students. A big part of your film is about these two young women who say they were assaulted and right. people didn't believe them. How, how common is that? It's very common, uh, unfortunately. I mean, when people came forward to report their rape to the school, they were either disbelieved, victim blamed, given erroneous information like they couldn't go to the police. I think in one case, uh, somebody was told that the assault was just evidence that uh, her assailant loved her when you showed in the, the documentary the statistics showing that maybe 5%, maybe 10% are false reporting. Right. And then said so it means 90, 95% of these reports are, are true. People gasped. Right. <laughs> I know. That's, isn't, that, isn't that interesting is that there's this notion that women lie, that people lie around sexual assault. It's a very s a small minority of reports are actually false. I mean, the studies that we show are between two and eight percent of reports of sexual assault are false. N no one would want to go through this kind of experience and you know publicly discuss something that's so horrifying. They're doing it because they believe in the system and they want to improve the school. How much harm is done when people, when they are raped and not believed? Uh, it's, it's extremely harmful. I mean obviously the sexual assault or the rape is is devastating but um, but to go to an institution that you trust um, and that you really trust to do the right thing and have them turn on you is, is even more devastating. It's a second betrayal. And in fact, many of these survivors have PTSD. And there's been studies that show that it's the response of the institution that people report to that is actually causes more profound PTSD than the actual assault in many cases. But don't the university presidents want to keep people safe too? They do. They, they do. I mean, but, but they, they've prior, you know, they're incentivized to keep this covered up. They're not transparent about this. You spoke to Melinda Manning, the right. associate dean at one of the universities, and she explained just how common this is. Exactly. So in your time at UNC, how, how many students came to you and said they've been assaulted? Um, yeah, it's hard, to put a number, it's hard to put a number on it, so at least 100. And of the hundred, how many of the perpetrators were removed from campus? From what I remember, no one was expelled during that time. So these guys could just get away with it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And people could commit it repeatedly. So she's expressing an incredible amount of frustration, really. 
But she couldn't act when she was the uh, associate dean? Well, no. I mean, you know, the power doesn't lie at that level. The pow power lies in the board and in the president. And uh, I mean, you know, we, we saw this over and over when we were researching this, because we're reaching out to schools around the country. And there, we came across a lot of administrators, many faculty who knew this was a problem and were very afraid to speak out. I mean, this is a what testament. What are they afraid of? They're afraid of being fired, uh, particularly if they don't have tenure, they'll be let go. And that uh, happened. You showed that in your movie. Yes, that happened, and it happens many times. And then the, the other issue is once they're let go, then they are, they are concerned that they won't be hired because they have a reputation as a whistleblower. The movie is about the horrible experience that these people go through, but it's right. it, the underlying theme is really almost abuse of power. I, I think that's very true. I mean, these institutions are very powerful. Um, you know, their endowments are sometimes in the billions and tens of billions, uh, and it, which is what is so remarkable when when it's a student decides to stand up against those universities. I mean, it's a, it's a great it shows a great deal of courage. And some of that power is in the fraternities. We see yeah. pictures of the drinking and the appeal, I guess, of hanging out with the cool guys. Right. Just how powerful or how insidious can those fraternities be? Well, fraternities are very powerful in many schools in the United States. Um, I mean, I've, I want to say that most men in fraternities are not assailants. They're horrified by this. I mean, most of these ass assaults are caused by a small minority of men who are repeat offenders who assault again and again. And the same is true, of course, in fraternities. The problem with fraternities is there's it's become very much a central aspect of, of the social scene on many schools. They have big parties, a lot of alcohol. And in an environment where men, you know, are objectifying women, it becomes very easy for a serial predator to operate. And you tell stories where that's alleged. There's so many stories that we, we've, where we interviewed people and, um, you know, they were, they were young, they just come to school, they were going to the, the, the hot new party, uh, they were befriended by a, you know, an o upperclassman, very charming, given alcohol and then lured away to a, a bedroom when they're very intoxicated and assaulted. And then, of course, who's going to be, be believed? The, the, the very well-known fraternity member or this young freshman? And over and over and over, it was the fraternity member who just, everything was just swept under the rug. There was some quite compelling stats about the number of reported sexual assaults, usually over 100, over 200, mm -hmm. and the right. number right. of expulsions, and it would be one. Yeah. Two, yeah. zero, yeah. so almost never. It's very rare. I mean, I, I think, um, anecdotally at least, a, a person who is assaulted is more likely to leave school because of the way they're treated than is her assault, uh, assailant to be expelled. Again, once you expel someone, there's a record of that. Schools don't want that. Uh, what schools are maybe beginning to realize is if they leave that assailant on, if, on the campus, they'll go on to assault again and again. And they'll send a message to everyone else who's an assailant that you can, you can assault and get away with it. How often does that happen, Re repeat offenses? Oh, well, I think the average repeat offender uh, commits six sexual assaults during their time in campus. I mean, most assaults are caused by repeat offenders. And it's, it's really important that schools, you know, go after this very aggressively. You also talk about the power of star athletes. Right. How does that play into the whole sexual assault story? Well, it's you know, oftentimes it's people who commit these assaults, and uh, and oftentimes they're repeat offenders. They're very entitled, um, and, and you know, certainly athletes in the U in the U.S. Uh, college and universities are esteemed. Um, there's there's just an incredible amount of money, and the sports industry is all supporting them. So. We've seen over and over and over when a star athlete is accused of sexual assault, the school, rather than investigating that assault, does everything they can to cover it up. But again, I want to say most athletes are not sexual assailants. It's, again, it's a small minority of men who assault again and again. And we actually think that sports programs may be one, you know, maybe an important part of the solution to this because athletes are look up to their coaches and, and they, they, they are sort of trained to follow leadership. In situations where coaches provide that leadership, uh, sexual assaults go down. Will you present the argument that coaches are more powerful than presidents at universities that, at, that have big football teams, for example? At, at many universities. I mean, in, in many states, uh, the coach at a state school is the highest paid employee in the state. Bigger than the president? Uh, bigger than the president, uh, more, paid more than the governor. 
We've been talking about the issue of sexual assault on campus for so long. Well, I think college presidents have to step up. I mean, college presidents have been hiding behind publicists, behind press releases on this issue. I hope this film, uh, you know, pressures them to, to do something. I mean, uh, behind the scenes, we're now getting contacted by college presidents. Some mm. college presidents are saying, I, I want to bring the film to the school. Um, I want to learn more from you. I mean, that's a good sign. We're also getting, you know, responses from some college presidents of attacking the messenger. That's a very bad sign. But it really shouldn't be up to students to be the driver in making our campuses safe. Well, I wonder what's taken so long. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why. I think the reason is up until recently, and, and in many ways, up until these students made it uh, made it apparent that it was an issue across the country, we always thought that it was one assault or that it was a problem on one school. And it w it, I think it's only been in the last year or two that this country has begun to realize that, no, this is a problem at all schools. And in fact, the schools that report the highest number of sexual assaults, those that may be not, I mean, sometimes they get the reputation as the rape school, but in fact, they may be the safest school because people report when they trust the school. Is there less shame now in coming forward? I think it's, there's starting to be. And putting a face and a name to these stories has made a big difference, coming up, coming up and standing up in front of cameras and telling their story. That brings out other people telling their stories. I think the film does the same thing. I mean, every time we show the film, at the end, you have people coming up s telling their stories, like, I've been assaulted 10, 20, 30 years ago. But there's a validation in this film. I think that will encourage people, more and more people, to come forward. That was a real pleasure. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks you very so much. much. It's wonderful to be here.